Hi everyone, hope you're well. Um, Sam's asked me to just produce a small video that would just talk you through how to use my maths. Um, you might want to start using it for the rest of this summer as a way of giving your children some extra. Um, and we're using it as, a, as a, a pilot now really with a view to using it for our homework platform for maths for next year. First thing you need to do is get yourself logged on. Now a few weeks ago I sent you out an email um, and it had usernames and passwords on it. So the first thing I did was, I, or would do to get logged in, will be to use the first level password. Okay, so the school username is Stoke6 and the school password is success152. Now you have got that on an email. If you need it, again, I can always resend the email out. So then you just log in. Okay, now, um, we've got them. Um, the next stage would be to go to assessment manager. This will enable us to be able to access the children's um, accounts um, from the top end. Okay, so you go to second level username, which is boost stoke six, and the password is compass 35, and then you just log in. Now, once it logs in, you'll get this screen up. Now, this screen you'll see. Um, I've set up all of the, the classes down there. I've done my best with that. The, the children's names are taken off the very off the paper copies of the registers that were in the in the uh, school office. So if they're not quite right, you might need to go in and adjust them, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, if I, for example, click on Atlantis, which is obviously my class, you'll see there it's got individual students down the left hand side and if i go in there uh, to admin and then look at atlantis all of my children's names will come up down on a drop down there all of them will also have logins and passwords so when you get the inevitable child in September, October time that has lost their password, you can always go in and show them um, or give them their new passwords. You'll also be able to, to print out a letter and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So if I wanted to do that, for example, I wanted to show um, you how to, to print out generic letters that you might want to send to your parents, I would probably go into here um, I would do that, click on the, the sort of all the students at the top there. I mean, I could do individual ones if I wanted to, but because I'm setting this up from scratch, I need to have all my children. And then I need to go up to there, generate parents letters. OK, now I can choose the letter. There's all sorts. There's online homework one. There's a booster pack. There's a password a change if they need to and there's a parent's letter now i would suggest for the moment to use the parent's letter and what that will do when we generate it it will send a, a file with um, and you can see up here i've already done one earlier on as a, as a practice you just need to save it to your desktop um it's asking me because it's already existing and what that will do is if you were to open the letter um, I'm not going to do it now because it won't work on the screen properly, is it will get, say, dear parent, your child, and it'll have the child's name, and it will give username and password for them. So I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do next week, it might take me a little bit of time, but I'm going to send out each individual letter with the email that we send for the week's learning to the parents. Okay, and we just generate. And that's that. OK, so we've sh I've shown you how to generate the parents' letters. Now it's probably a good idea that we start thinking about how we actually set tasks. And it really isn't difficult. What we will need to do is go into allocation. Now, I'm probably going to go into all classes. And what I've done is I've set up a, a small dummy run class down here. So I've called it Stoke Damrell Demo for the moment. Obviously, I'll delete that later on when we don't need it anymore. And then we've got individual students on the right-hand side here. And we've got 
Um, I've just used Josh, myself and Ben's names for the moment. Um, now, if I wanted to, if I looked at it and I thought, oh, I've got a new student come to my class, I need to add them in, then probably what I would do is go back to admin, create new student, and I might say um, that it's James Allington, and then create. And you'll see that James will appear pretty quickly down there. So we've got four students in there now. And that will also generate James a login and a password. So go back to allocation. And I'm ready now to start setting some tasks. So if I looked at, for example, Josh. Now, earlier on, <clears throat> Josh has been doing very well. He doesn't need the work on place value for this week that, that I'm going to set. Um, or that I've set for myself and Ben. So I probably thought to jo with, with Josh, I'm going to give him something a little trickier. Now, in order to set the task, I click into set task as you've obviously just seen, and then I've got to choose something for Josh. So if I, one thing I would do is use National Curriculum England. Don't confuse issues by going anywhere else. Um, generate an area, so select an area. Now, Josh has been doing really well with number, but I think I want to try and push him a bit. I want to push him into um, geometry and statistics. Now, you do see down here as well, there's stuff on times tables and bits and pieces for boosters. Don't worry about boosters for a minute. Just stick to your um, your main number strand or your main math, mathematical strands up here. So Josh has done really well. I'm going to give him something on measurement just to see if he's OK with it. I then might pick a topic. And it's topic is measurement again, and then I get everything come up. So Josh has got all the measurement um, objectives from year one all the way up there. We've got year three and we've got year four. Now, Josh has been doing really well, but I think I want to give him something on money problems just to see what he can do in year four. And you can see then I've filled in all of these boxes. Now, if I wanted to, and it would make sense, I would go in and look at the task. OK, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, but that's a, a, a good option and a sensible thing to do. And then you've got the dates on the right hand side up here. And that tells you when you're setting the task and when you would expect it to be finished. OK, the children will still be able to access it after that date but it will flag up on their account as being overdue or late. And you might then want to talk to them about why they haven't done their homework, for example. And then I might say, OK, that's it. I'm not doing anything else for Josh, so I'm just going to set it and close. So Josh now has got, you can see in his frame, he's got his written methods and he's also got his money problems. So that's nice and simple. <clears throat> now, I might want to set everybody something as well so i might go into it says set task i'll go back into stoke dameral there um got individual uh it's not letting me do it why is it not Okay, so when I set task, I can, if I want, have everybody doing something. So if, you, if you're doing covering something in maths, for example, for the week, you might want to give every child a base task that just proves their consolidation. So you might want to have this ticked at the top here. And then that means everybody has it. If you think actually there's something that's going to be suitable for Josh, but not suitable for James, then you click that off and just pick Josh. Either way, it works quite nicely for everybody to get it if you need to. OK. Now it's not letting me do that now, so I'm going to cancel it. OK, so what we need to look at now, though, is how we give feedback to the children. If they've done some work online, what are you going to do? <clears throat> now, if I look at if I go into Phil, He's got two tasks. 
Now he's been he's done one of them, which you can see, but he's not done the other one yet. And what I could do then is I've I've gone in and I've had a look at what he's done. So that's not what I wanted to do. Feedback. Okay, so I can go in, click on feedback, and you can see there the two there's usually two questions per um per topic or per task. So question one, Phil's got nine out of nine, and the same for question two. So percentage-wise, he's got 100% right. He only bothered doing it once because he knew he could do it. Now, you might see sometimes children have the option to go back and redo and retry and practice. So you might see that they've had to do it five or six times, which is fine. <clears throat> and at the bottom here, you've got a little box where you can leave some feedback for the children. Now, you might want to say, can you have another go at this? We need a bit more practice. Or it might say, come and see me in school and we can talk it through together. In this case, fabulous work, Phil, well done. And then you would send it to that child. The comment that will appear on the right, on the left hand side. Now, if I go to Ben. Now, Ben has also only done the one task so far, which is fine. He's got all the questions right in question one, but in the second section, he got none right at all. He really struggled. So he only got 60%. He only bothered giving it one try though. So I've said um, here, a good attempt, Ben, maybe you need a little more practice. OK, and it could be something as simple as that, just to show recognition that the children have actually had a go and tried to do it. It is a good diagnostic tool as well, of course, for you to be able to just see where they are with what they've learned this week. And you can send that back to them and when they log in, they'll see that straight away. Now, if I go to back to allocation again. Um, hang on, let's just check it's allocation up here. Now then, I can go in and have a look at James's work there. Um, and he's not actually had a task yet, so it's so it's a bit, a bit immaterial for him. But Josh, for example, if I go in and look at Josh and I can I can just have a little look up here. You can see that there, if I've gone into Stoke Damerel demo, the class, I've gone into allocation and you can see that you've got two tabs up here, individual tasks and outstanding work. Now that outstanding work doesn't mean it's brilliant work as we tend to get um, thought of these days with like sort of um, Ofsted uh, gradings. Um, outstanding work is things that they haven't completed. So, for example, there we can go down, you can print it as a spreadsheet if you really want to. James has got nothing outstanding yet because he's not actually been set anything. Now, Josh has done, he's got still to do, he's got his more written methods and his money problems. You can see that Ben and myself have got one outstanding. Nothing's overdue though, so that's all right. But there's one that I've still got to do the working with thousands. And Ben's exactly the same. So it does give you a, um, an option there to just see who's done what and who still needs to, to check and look at, or you need to check to see that they're completing their homework. And that'll work for everything. Now, I'm hoping that that will give you um, a bit of a, a brief overview of how my maths could work. Um, you will probably need a bit of help here or there um, and I'm more than happy for you to contact me or give me a call and I'll and I'll talk you through anything that you're not sure on. Um, it isn't difficult, it's really just playing with the website. It does work really well. Um, I have used it in other schools before and it's quite a nice way of actually um, giving your children who are at home um, some extra stuff on top of my maths if you want to. Um, there's no pressure on you to use this, but we are looking at having spoke to Sam. We are looking at using this for our um, homework platform for next year. 
So any feedback on how it works would be really useful. Um, and I'll be monitoring it with my children as well. So I'll be using it um, ongoing for the rest of this year, just as you will be. So hope you stay safe. I look forward to seeing you all really soon. It seems like it's been such a long time since I've seen some of you. Um, take care and I'll speak to you soon.